Hello folks and welcome to part one of a series of lectures on cell division. In this short lecture, I'll merely be introducing you to chromosomes and the terminology we use when talking about this genetic material. It's important to have some basic knowledge and understanding of the terminology in order to move forward and study cell division. If you look at most cells, like this one, under the microscope, you'll likely see just the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and the cell membrane. This is an animal cell magnified about 400 times, and it's been stained with a biological stain so that we can see some of its parts. A more detailed picture can be taken using an electron microscope. If we zoom in here, we see the nucleus and the DNA inside. This tangle of DNA is actually the unwound strands of the chromosomes of the cell called chromatin. In this animation, we'll see the remarkable way our DNA is tightly packed up to fit into the nucleus of every cell. The process starts with assembly of a nucleosome, which is formed when eight separate histone protein subunits attach to the DNA molecule. The combined tight loop of DNA and protein is the nucleosome. Multiple nucleosomes are coiled together, and these then stack on top of each other. The end result is a fiber of packed nucleosomes known as chromatin. This fiber, which at this point is condensed to a thickness of 30 nanometers, is then looped and further packaged using other proteins which are not shown here. This remarkable multiple folding allows six feet of DNA to fit into the nucleus of each cell in our body, an object so small that 10,000 nuclei could fit on the tip of a needle. The end result is that the DNA is tightly packed into the familiar structures we can see through a microscope, chromosomes. At a certain stage of the cell cycle, just as it's ready to divide, it's possible to see the individual chromosomes in a cell. In preparation for division, the chromosomes have doubled themselves and have begun to pack up for the division. Chromosomes are made up of DNA that's been wound up and packaged using a packaging protein called histones. A complete chromosome is really a singular structure such as the one seen here. This is a model of human chromosome number 16. Segments of DNA on each chromosome are instructions for making certain proteins. These are called genes. Chromosome mapping involves identifying the genes and the proteins they code for. The Human Genome Project set out to map all of the genes on all of the chromosomes in humans. This model of a chromosome is an unduplicated chromosome and is what it would look like if it coiled up before it copied or replicated itself. However, we only get to see chromosomes in, in this condensed form after they've replicated. In preparation for cell division, each chromosome will copy itself. We'll discuss DNA replication later. But for now, just understand that this unduplicated chromosome will make a copy of itself. This identical copy is attached. This is the duplicated chromosome here. We call the two halves of the chromosome now sister chromatids. In preparation for cell division, the DNA must copy itself so that the new cells will have the same genetic information. And the process is called DNA replication. When the process of DNA replication is done, the singular chromosome will take on a double structure. The two halves of the chromosome have identical DNA and are ready to be divided so that each of the new cells receives a copy of the chromosome. This point here, where they're connected, is called the centromere. Each half, again, are identical sister chromatids. The organization of the genetic material has some terminology that you should know. All of the genes in a cell constitutes the cell's genome. A genome can consist of a single DNA molecule, such as in prokaryotic cells, or a number of DNA molecules, common in eukaryotic cells. DNA molecules in a cell are packaged into chromosomes. Eukaryotic cells can be classified based on the number of sets of chromosomes in each nucleus. Somatic cells 
are non-reproductive cells. They're diploid, meaning they have two sets of chromosomes, one set of maternal and one set of paternal chromosomes. Maternal chromosomes come from a mother, and the paternal chromosomes come from the father. Germ cells, or gametes, these are reproductive cells, or sex cells, such as sperm and eggs. These are haploid, meaning they only have one set of chromosomes. Every eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of chromosomes in each of its nucleus. Chimpanzees have 48 chromosomes. A cow has 60. The humans, humans have 46. Cats have 38. Dogs have 78. And a fern, called the reticulatum fern, has anywhere from 1,200 to 1,260 chromosomes. But the only one that you should remember here is that the humans have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. The process of cell division, or mitosis, is shown here. The process is a bit more complicated than this, but the picture gets right to the point. Recall the first cell, a parent cell. Notice that the chromosomes are singular structures. The DNA then replicates, and the chromosomes are double structure. When the cell splits, each daughter cell gets identical copies of the new singular structure chromosomes. As we all start off as one cell, this process happens billions of times to create a new organism. The same process is also responsible for growth and repair of an organism's body. A technique that involves taking a picture of a single cell in the process of mitosis allows us to examine each chromosome individually. Here's an actual picture of the 46 human chromosomes. Each chromosome has another that's very similar to it. In fact, they're like a pair of shoes. When these pair are put together, we can create a chart like this. These pairs not only look alike, but they carry genes for the same traits. You may know that one of the pair came from your father and the other from your mother. They are called your maternal and paternal sets. We use the term homologous to describe each one of the maternal pair in, the, in each set. Homologous means that they are similar and carry the same genes for a particular trait. Sometimes a karyotype is created when we're looking for abnormalities in human chromosome structure. This is often done with cells of a fetus before a child is born. In this karyotype, we see that instead of one set of chromosome number 21, there are three chromosomes. This is a condition known as trisomy 21. In the United States, this condition occurs in nearly 10 out of every 10,000 children born. It's a condition better known as Down syndrome. Children born with this condition have lower than normal into intellectual abilities. They have heart disorders and other anatomical and physiological abnormalities. When we study meiosis, we can discuss how this occurs in other similar conditions. So there's your introduction to chromosomes and DNA. Practice some of the terminology and move on to video number two on mitosis. If you have any questions, write them down and bring them to class. Until then, be well. If it feels right, it ain't from my heart. If you feel